I just want to again thank um, Dr. Boyer and the entire Dyersburg family for asking me and giving me the opportunity to virtually address this audience at your 2021 Martin Luther King Day celebration. Virtually, because the year 2020 brought us, brought upon us COVID-19 pandemic. We are all in a place in time where celebrations of any kind are different. We can't physically come together. We can't, or at least we shouldn't travel to visit our loved ones. And my loved ones a lot are in New York City, so I haven't seen them in about a year. We have to wear masks most of the time and we have to sanitize all of the time. The pandemic has changed our lives profoundly. Sadly, just about all of us has suffered losses, lost loved ones, jobs, businesses, and in countless ways. The recent riot at the U.S. Capitol also weighs heavily on us daily. Therefore, we must work together to do our part and we must do everything in our power to address this because we all want to live and for our lives to be a positive experience. So if there ever was a time that I could think about for us to sit back, get quiet and reflect on Martin Luther King Jr., the time is now. So 2020, when you think about, when you hear that term 2020, I automatically think about the fact that it really means perfect vision. The phrase hindsight is 2020 vision means looking back, reflecting at a situation or an event and having a clearer understanding of, of it and how things could have been done better. Little did I know that the year 2020 would bring into focus with clarity my reflections on the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So as Dr. Boyer said, I am a member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority, which is a public sorority, and I've been a member for about 30 years. And as the social action chair for our chapter, one of our goals is to get more engaged in voting rights and civic responsibility. So the co-chair and the committee decided that we should sponsor a trip to celebrate the 55th anniversary commemorating the march over the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, otherwise known as Bloody Sunday. So now what we know is the original marchers were about 600 people which included the late Congressman John Lewis from Georgia, who at the time was about 25 years old. They were marching from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery, and Montgomery is the capital of the state of Alabama. They were gonna peacefully protest, really about the previous shooting and actual subsequent murder of Jimmy Lee Jackson and the need for all of us to have full voting rights. Well, while crossing, they were beaten by police, so they never made it across. John Lewis suffered a skull fracture. All the while, these marchers remained, by the way, nonviolent. Nonviolence was a key principle in the teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King. So that happened on March 7th. Two days later, on March 9th, Dr. Martin Luther King and about 2,500 people marched across or began to walk across the same bridge in a symbolic gesture. When they got to about the middle of the bridge, they prayed and they went back. They did not go all the way across. So, unfortunately, that night, several marchers and who were peaceful protesters were beaten by the residents on their way to their hotels. This march 
has occurred every year since its inception. It's also included Martin Luther King, Barack Obama, and many others over the years. Thousands of people from all walks of life, all faiths, all races attend this annual event. And by the way, because of the pandemic, this year, in 2021, the march will be virtual. So, back to my vision. On, 2020 of Feb on February 29th, 2020, a busload of sorority members, friends and family members, we left Jackson, Tennessee, headed to Selma, Alabama. While riding, we watched the movie Selma, it was really emotional and raw, but it put us in the right frame of mind to reflect on the experience we were getting ready to embark upon. We sang songs, we talked, and we talked about what the trip must have felt like for those who did it way, 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 way long ago in 1965. We knew that those courageous marchers before had paved the way for us, and we all expressed a high level of gratefulness. On Sunday, March 1st, 2020, we arrived at the March location in Selma. We had about 50 people on our bus, ranging from ages 10 to 80. We saw thousands and thousands of people. It was overwhelming. It just seemed like a sea of people everywhere. Mind you, the pandemic had not even quite hit yet because this is March 1st. We participated in a big pre-March rally where we saw local and national politicians and leaders of a lot of organizations. When it was time to march over the bridge, we were literally pressed front to back with people like sardines in a can. There was no pushing, there was no yelling, there were only smiles, fellowship, and kind words. It was amazing. Facial expressions told the weight of the moment. Everything I read and heard about the Edmund Pettus Bridge was suddenly real, surreal. Now the bridge is about a 10 minute walk back and forth, if you do it that way. Yet that day, it took us two hours, maybe a little longer, but we did it. And oh, what a feeling to know that we had walked in the footsteps of so many brave people marching in order for us to have the right to vote. When we returned to the bus, we felt jubilant, energized, blessed, and ready to continue our civic engagement work. We conducted, at the time, it was the idea we thought about when we said, let's do it. We conducted a brief survey after we conducted the march with all the people on the bus, and the responses ranged from awesome to this was on my bucket list to thank you forebearers. This was emotional and I admired their courage. I felt like Martin Luther King was down on us and watching us, et cetera, et cetera. The sheer emotions that we got from the written page from all the participants was, was mind blowing. So now we have, I'm not sure if we have the pictures, but we had some pictures from the event. Okay, we do have them. So you can see, this is us, I mean, in this, I, I'm actually in the picture to the left with some sunglasses. There's a guy with a, with a blue um, baseball cap. I'm sort of behind him. That's one of the pictures with the crowd participating all across, all across the march. Are there some others too? Let's see. Okay, now this is a picture of, now this is the group that was in front of us. So as you can see, you have Reverend Al Sharpton, Reverend Jesse Jackson, you have Senator Elizabeth Warren, 
uh, Joy Reid. You have just a, a host of people that, you know, we just actually could just reach out and touch them. So it was really awesome. Let's see, do we have any others? Okay, now this is the picture that, you know, when we saw this, this is the thing that just brought, that just brought tears to our eyes because we have here Congressman John Lewis and the, a group of people sort of propped him up because as you know, at the time he had already been diagnosed with the um, cancer, so he was a little weak, but he was there. And so looking down on him is Reverend Al Sharpton, behind him is Stacey Abrams, behind her is Elizabeth Warren, and then behind her you'll see Jesse Jackson. To the right of Elizabeth Warren you'll see Derek Johnson, who's the CEO of the NAACP, and a host of other people were there. Let's see, do we have one more maybe? That is the image of like the gazillion of people walking across this really narrow bridge. And that's an awesome sight to really see. And I think that may be it. And that, this last picture is our busload of people. A lot of deltas, but we shared it with other Greek, Greek organizations as well. And that's our happy group. Um, getting ready to get on the bus before we attended the march. Yeah. And that's myself and Andrea Bond Johnson. We are both so social action chairs. So at the pre-rally, we said, let's stand in front of this great sign that talks about voting, because we think that's one of the most important things that we can promote. So the pictures you see really show you all of the awesome people that were there. And what you didn't see in the picture we also had the Reverend Dr. William Barber. Also who was there was Senator Amy Klobuchar, Mayor Pete, Tom Sawyer, Tom, Tom Steyer, and driving by in his very cool Ray-Ban shades was President-elect Joe Biden. So we saw the whole gamut, it was awesome. So as I reflect on Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, and what his legacy means to me, I hope you think about what it means to you. Because after all, everything you read, everything you hear, everything you experience about him can help and should help shape you in a positive way. So as I stated earlier, 2020 vision means perfect vision. When we think about our eyesight and the phrase hindsight is 2020 vision means looking back, reflecting at a situation or an event and having a clearer understanding of what it is. The year 2020 was eye opening again due to the pandemic. We clearly see that it has and continues to impact all races, ages, ethnicities, socioeconomic levels and religions. We also understand how it disproportionately affects black and brown people primarily because healthcare is not equal and equitable for all people. So here's the parallel with Dr. Martin Luther King. In 1966, Dr. King gave a speech to doctors and healthcare workers in Chicago, and he said, I quote, of all the inequities and inequalities that exist, the injustice in healthcare is the most shocking and inhumane. He said that that long ago. He believed that healthcare is a right. The pandemic shines a light on our healthcare system in a big way. Dr. King's vision has still not been realized, and so it is very relevant today. His vision was certainly about peace, but it was also a lot more about civic action, action in healthcare, action with jobs, action in education, and action so we all can live freely in an environment that enables every voice to be heard. So as I close, I'd like to give you some Martin Luther King reflective work. I don't want to call it homework, but I want to call it reflective work. I want you to Google, because now this is what we do. Anytime we need to know something, we go right to Google. 
So I want you to Google Jimmy Lee Jackson. Learn about how he tried to register five times to vote. I want you to Google the Voting Rights Act of 1965, and specifically, I want you to Google Section 5 and preclearance so you can learn when people start talking about restore the Voting Rights Act, what they really mean when they're speaking about that. I want you to Google Bloody Sunday. And of course, I want you to continue to learn and grow and reflect on the teachings of Martin Luther King and how it, is a, how it can be a part of your life. Take a deep dive and remember and consider this last Martin Luther King quote. He said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Thank you.